If you want to use Todoist to organize your life, here's how to do it. The very first thing we're going to start with is creating some top level projects. And we're going to do that as different areas of your life. Think of your life as having different areas. One of them might be admin and finances. We all have admin stuff to deal with bookkeeping and money stuff. So any to do's related to that are going to go in here. Now, another one is fun and trips, maybe some events you're planning, trips you're organizing, to do's related to that. They live here. Now, we all have physical and mental health stuff to deal with. We all have home or housekeeping tasks. Most of us have work tasks, but this could also be studies for you, for example. And let's create one called relationships for tasks related to other people, your family and friends, maybe something like help your wife with something. Could go in here. So we've got these top level projects and I'm going to call them areas. Now let's add some tasks to them. That's of course the whole point of using an app like Todoist, right? How do you add tasks? Let's say we want to add a task to admin and finances. You can just click add task right here and say send invoices to bookkeeper and add the task like this. But there's other ways to add tasks. I can use the keyboard shortcut A. So just press the letter A on my keyboard and that creates a new task at the bottom of the list. I can also go shift A and it creates the task at the top of the list. All right. So let's say scan documents on my desk might be another one. Boom. Now, if I have Todoist open, you'll see right now it says Todoist at the top. I have Todoist open. I can press Q. And if I press Q, I bring up quick add. Q for quick add. And I can add tasks this way. Now, if I was looking at a specific list, it already pre-selects this list or this project to assign the task to. Okay. So let's say we have another one right here. Um, and that is to organize previously scanned documents. Now let's say I want to do that today. One of the really cool things about Todoist is it has natural language recognition. So I can literally just type today and you'll see that it gets this colored background. And that means Todoist recognizes that I want to do this today. And it assigned a due date of today. Now in Todoist, a quick aside, um, there's only one type of date. It's called the due date. I want you to think of this not as the due date or deadline, but as the date that you're planning to do this. If there's a hard deadline, keep track of it in some other way. For example, writing in the description, hard deadline, you know, March 25th or something like that. Okay. Now let's add this task and we'll see this task sitting right here. Now you can also pull up quick add without having Todoist open. So let's say I'm clicking here and I have Apple Notes open, for example. You see Todoist is no longer the app at the front. I can go Control Command A on Windows. It might be a slightly different command. And I can say email mark the report. For example, tomorrow it recognizes tomorrow and I can go hashtag work and it will recognize this, recognize that I want to put this in the high level area, top level project work. And then I click add task. And now if I go to work, I'll see that the task is in there. So it's very handy. Let's say you're on a Zoom call and you have some tasks. You can pull up this quick add thing on top of whatever you're doing and just add those tasks to Todoist and using natural language already assign them to a specific day or a specific project. Now, let's say that I have the actual PDF and I want to attach it. I just click on the task. I click on comment and then I can click right here and attach a file. I can also attach a voice recording if I want to some audio. Okay. Pretty cool. Now, I also want you to not just add individual tasks, but to add your projects. Let me give you an example. Right now I'm running a live course. It's four weeks where I get on Zoom with a bunch of people. We have about 33 students and I'm helping them organize their life. So this course is called Organize Your Life. So create a new project for it. Organize Your Life live course. And I'm doing this because there's a bunch of tasks related to this course. I don't want to put them all under work. It would just get messy. I want to create a bit more organization. So I create a sub project under work. Let's add some tasks to it. Create the week for slides. Create the week for workbook. Send students a post course feedback survey. Those are some things I might have. Okay. That I need to do. Uh, take a group photo on Zoom is another one that I'd like to do. Okay. Now I can create sections. If I go here, you see add section and I can create one called week four, for example, and I can create another one called after the course finishes. And then I can drag these tasks right in there. You see. So now I'm adding a little bit more organization just to help me get a feel of what I'm going to do in which phase. 
Now let's say that I want to work on these two things today. You'll notice that I have been adding a bunch of tasks to Todoist, but I haven't just been adding them all either to the inbox or today, because I want you to think very deliberately, very consciously about what you're going to work on today. Don't think of your to-do app as Everything goes under today and let's see what you get to. I want you to make a very conscious plan for what you're going to work on each day. And we'll talk more about that sort of towards the end of the video. All right. But let's say I want to do this today. Then I can actually just click this button right here and just go today. And let's say I want to do the week, the week for workbook as well today. Let's say I want to do this one on March 25th. I'll just type March 25th. Boom. All right. Now those are scheduled for those dates. So that's pretty cool. And under today, you'll see that these two are listed right here. All right. Next, let's set up some repeating tasks and projects. Right now I'm traveling and I'm staying in hotels and I wanna make sure that I leave a tip for the housekeepers every day because they're working so, so, so hard. They do such a good job cleaning my room all the time. Now, let's use quick add and I'm gonna say leave a tip for housekeeping. And I'm just gonna say every day. And what that does is you'll see there's an instance for today, but you see there's this little repeating sign. It's gonna create a new task every day. And I'm gonna assign this to the home area. So now if I go add task, you see under home, it says leave a tip for housekeeping and it already created one for today. You can come up with all kinds of things you need to do every day. Take your pills, do some journaling. You got this. So another thing I want to do is create a task right here. Uh, let's do it under admin and finances. We could also think of it as work, doesn't matter. And I'm going to call it do weekly review. This is extremely important. Now you see that Todoist here recognizes weekly using natural language recognition. I'm going to click on it. That unrecognizes it, okay? Because we're going to set this up manually. Let's go into this task and add some subtasks. Process email inbox. Process Todoist inbox. Um, make sure all Todoist tasks and projects are up to date. See which hard deadlines are coming up. Which hard deadlines and events are coming up. And schedule tasks ahead of time if necessary. So weekly review is an extremely important part of being organized and productive. All right. So I really want you to do this every week. Now I'm going to go in here and say every Sunday, every Sunday. And Todoist is going to recognize this. If I click save, you'll see that it's due Sunday, but it has this rep repetition thing and it's going to create a new instance of this every Sunday. Let's go to the upcoming view and we can see, for example, if I click today, this is what I've scheduled for today, for tomorrow. And if I keep scrolling, you'll see for Sunday, we have a weekly review with all the subtasks and you get a new one every Sunday. So this is pretty cool, right? Now, what happens when you have a project or a task or a task with subtasks and you do it repeatedly, but not on a set schedule? For example, for me, that's recording these YouTube videos. I do this frequently, but not on a set schedule. Now, to do that, we're going to set up some templates. So let's create another high level area and call it templates. Technically, it's a project, right? I like to keep it at the bottom all the way at the bottom. And in here, I'm going to add a task and says, create a YouTube video. Let's come up with some subtasks for this. So by clicking into it and we'll do prepare outline, prepare recording setup and record the video, edit the video, upload the video to YouTube. If I want to, I can create multiple levels of subtasks. So I can prepare recording setup. I can create more subtasks, like set up the microphone, set up the camera, set up the lights. All right. So now we got this template right here. That's pretty cool, right? And whenever I want to record a YouTube video, I can duplicate it. So I can right click it and duplicate it and move it to my work area. But I'm going to create actually a separate high level project called YouTube. And I'll show you why, even though it's still work. Okay. Right here. Um, no, that should be here. Alphabet, Peter. Alphabet. There we go. So I'm going to create this duplicate one and drag it into YouTube. And let's rename it and let's say YouTube 102, how to organize your to-dos with Todoist. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here and change the view of this project. You can do this on a project by project basis. And I'm going to say layout board. And now we have a Kanban board. So I can add sections like idea. Let's say this was an idea. Okay. But I can also add one that says writing and filming and editing. And maybe we can come up with some more, but you get, you get the point. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say right now I'm actually filming this so I can put this under filming and just kind of get a, a sense if I have multiple videos going on at the same time, what is the status of each of these? And of course, I've done these two things and I'm currently recording like this. Pretty neat, right? Okay, 
Next up, I want to show you how to connect Todoist to your calendar. So for this, let's go to Todoist on the web. One of the cool features about Todoist is it's available on the web in your browser. And we're going to click here. And then we're going to click uh, for a oh, new version available. There we go. Just refresh that for a second. Sometimes you got to do that. And then we're going to click uh, settings. Now, this does require, by the way, that you have the pro version. A lot of these things I'm showing you require the pro version of Todoist. So make sure you have that. I'm going to go to integrations. And right here, I'm going to connect to do is to Google Calendar. Okay, so right here, I'm going to click Add Calendar. And you might have to give it permissions. If this is the first time you do it, you might have to give it some permissions to access your Google Calendar. And you'll see this screen where you have a bunch of options. Just leave it like this. Click Connect. Now, after you've given it all the appropriate permissions, what you can do is go to your Google Calendar. And you'll see there's a new calendar called Todoist that has been created. Let's make it red because Todoist is red. And what you'll see is that the tasks that you have scheduled for specific days show up as all day events right here in Google Calendar. That's pretty neat, right? But we can do something better. Let's say, let's go back to Todoist. Let's go to today. Let's say I want to create the week four slides at maybe 2 p.m. today. What I can just do is say today 2 p.m. And then click Save. And now it's assigned today 2 p.m. And you see that right here. Now, if I go back to Google Chrome and Google Calendar, oh, the task is scheduled for 2 p.m. That's pretty neat, right? So this is one way that you can time block. We'll talk more about that later in the video. Um, and you can move this around. You know, if you want this to be at 3 p.m., you can move it around and that'll synchronize with Todoist as well. So that's really, really cool. Now, let me show you something else. Um, see, it's 3 p.m. now. I use a calendar app called Fantastical. It's only available on Apple devices, but it has a really good integration with Todoist, so I want to show you how it works. Let's open Fantastical right here. Again, we're looking at my schedule for today and for this week. And I'm going to go to Settings. And then I will go to, uh, by the way, first you want to make sure that if you're also using Google Calendar, that you turn off that new Todoist calendar so you don't see things twice. Then we're going to go to Accounts. And we're going to click Plus, and we're going to click Todoist. Now, you're going to, again, make, have to make sure that you authorize Todoist to access Fantastical. All right, so I've done that right here. Now what can I do? Um, I can go into uh, calendars. That's where that is. Calendars, there we go. And if you scroll down, you're going to see Todoist. Just check all of these except for templates. All of them except for templates, all right? Now what you'll see is, hey, my tasks for today are showing up under my schedule for today in the sidebar as well as here, these are my tasks for today. And any tasks that have a time um, attached to them are also going to show up here. And again, I can drag this around if I want to do this later. And that'll reflect it to do it. So it's a two-way synchronization as well. Very neat, right? So you have one view where in an integrated way, you can see both your to-dos and your scheduled events all in one place. And of course, I can check that off right here. If this is something that I've done, organized previously scanned documents, I can check that off. And if I go back to Todoist, you'll see that that task, boom, it disappears because I've completed it. Okay, a couple more things I want to show you. Let's go over to filters and labels. Labels are like tags. I'm going to call them tags, honestly, because it makes much more sense. Let's create a label or tag called someday. We're going to apply this to tasks that are things that we'd like to do sometime in the future, but we don't necessarily want to constantly see them. Okay, let's say I want to plan a trip to Iceland. I'm going to use the at symbol and then type someday and then click this. You can also click it right here and then go add task. Now we have a trip, plan a trip to Iceland to do with a someday label or tag. Okay. And you can apply this to any to do. Let's say, let's use this quite aggressively. Let's say anything that you're fairly sure you will not get to in the next two weeks. Anything that you're fairly sure you will not get to in the next two weeks. Apply that someday tag. Let me show you why. We're also going to set up a filter called Anytime. This filter is going to help you plan your days. So let's go to Filters. And by the way, let's click the heart symbol. What that does is it creates this favorite section right here where someday we'll live. Um, just an easy access to it. We're also going to create a filter. We're going to call it Anytime. Now just give it this query. I know this looks a little bit complicated. What we're telling it is, hey, let's show me all of my tasks except for the subtasks and except for stuff in templates. And except for stuff that has the someday filter uh, um, label, all tasks that are either already assigned to today or that don't have a date in the future assigned yet. 
Okay, this sounds complicated, but let's add it. And let's go to filters and labels and let's give it a heart so it lives under favorites. Now what I see here is here I see all of my tasks that make sense for me to work on today. Because I haven't already said they're for a specific date in the future or they're for someday and they're not templates, okay? So if I'm planning my day, these are the things I can consider doing today, right? That's what this view is for. And we'll talk more about planning your day in just a minute. Before we do, before we do, I just want to give you a couple extra tips about making sure Todoist is available on all of your devices. Todoist is available pretty much anywhere, your phone, tablet, computer, browser, set up widgets on your phone as well. And I just want to show you the Google Chrome extension that's pretty neat if you do use Google Chrome. Um, let's go over here, close this one. There's a Todoist for Chrome extension. So let me just add that to my Chrome. And what we can do with this, this is very dope. Let's say right here, you're looking at my website at my course called Big Picture Productivity and you're like, I should enroll in Peter's course. You can go find your Todoist extension. So right here, and you can click on it. it takes a second to open. And then you can click add website as task. And what that does is it creates a task with a link to the website. So you can say enroll in Peter Akis' course, Big Picture Productivity. Let's say that is a, um, we can create a learning area for that actually. Let's create a learning area for that. So now, okay, boom. Now it sits in my to-do list. It got added to the inbox and also to today because we um, set it as today. But let's create a new high level project area called learning or stud studying if you want, whatever you want to call it. Um, oh, whoops, right there. And let's drag that in there. And now this is something that you can do today or you can assign it to some other day, okay? And this is a link. So if I click this, it again opens my website. Very cool, right? So here's another example. Let's say you're looking at this page that has to do with keyboard shortcuts and you want to learn how to use them. Click it in Chrome, add website as task and say, learn to doist keyboard shortcuts. And maybe we don't want to do that today, but we want to put it under learning. Boom, there we go. Back to Todoist, under learning, we've got this other task. So that's really handy. All right, so make sure you set up um, Todoist on all of your devices and install the Chrome extension if you use Chrome. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is how to plan your day in Todoist. You've basically got three options. They all involve um, let, let's remove all of these from today, just so we're starting from scratch, okay? I want you to start from scratch every single day. Don't roll over tasks. It's the best way to feel bad. Uh, repeating tasks are an exception, or tasks that were previously scheduled for today, that you deliberately previously scheduled for today. Those are an exception. But start with mostly a blank slate. Three options. We're going to go to the anytime view and we're going to pick some tasks to work on today. Let's say I want to create the week four slides today, so I'm just going to say today and the week four workbook. Remember, we're looking at the anytime view. By the way, you can go here, view, and just say group by project. That might help, because now things are a bit grouped by project, okay? Let's say you wanna enroll in my course today. That's something that you wanna do. And you wanna scan the documents on your desk, send the invoices to the bookkeeper. Okay, don't go overboard. Have a really manageable to-do list. Now, this is your to-do list for today. And now, now this is where the three options come in. The first one is just sort these in the order that you plan to do them. So let's say you want to leave your tip for housekeeping first, and then you want to create the slides, do your hard work. That's what I want to do. And send the invoices to your bookkeeper, scan documents, and enroll in my course later in the day. Okay? Then you just start working through them. You can assign these to times if you want, but you don't have to. No, that's option one. Option two is sort your tasks by priority. Todoist has a built-in priority feature. And so here's how that works. If I click a task, I can give this a priority. By default, it's priority four, but I can say this is priority one, two, or three. So creating slides for my course, that sounds like a high priority thing. So I can do priority one. And creating the workbook is also a high priority thing, priority two. Now, let's say after doing that, the most important thing actually is to enroll in Peter's course. I can give it priority three and um, maybe, or was it no priority two? And then maybe this is sort of priority three and this is also priority three and I'll leave the other one on priority four. Another, this is another way to do it. And you'll see that Todoist automatically floats top priority things to the top of the list. So that can be very handy to help and, and it also color codes them. I'm colorblind myself. So color, color coding for me is not as useful as it is for most people, um, but hey, this works pretty well. 
Just think carefully when you do this, if you find that a lot of your stuff is P4, or the lowest category of importance, it's like, why do you have all of those tasks in your task manager if they're not very important? Right? And so something like leave a tip for housekeeping, I'm going to do that today. So I can assign it the lowest priority, but like I'm going to do it either way because I want to, you know? So you can do this, um, but be careful. Think carefully about why you're assigning something a certain importance and don't delude yourself into thinking um, that some things are unimportant even though you really, really want to do them. All right, final option is to time block. So the way that to do that is if I just go remove some of those priority things, um, uh, oh, you got you to set it to priority four. And I, I want to do that because when you start combining these things, it gets a little bit messy, all right? So I try not to combine all of these. Try to pick one way of um, planning your day. And now I can just add time. So I can say, for example, you know what? I want to do this today at 2 p.m. And I want to do this next thing today at 4 p.m. And let's say that I want to send the invoices at 5 p.m. You know, you can plan your day like that. And then, of course, if you go to your calendar, you're going to start seeing that these things are scheduled on your calendar. Okay? So, I hope you found this useful. If you want to learn more about task management or about, you know, productivity in the small sense of the word, in the big sense of the word, there's three things I'd like you to do. One of them is give this video a like. That would be really appreciate it and encourages me to make more videos. Second thing is subscribe to the channel so you're going to see my new videos coming up. And the third thing is check out my website. For example, my course, Big Picture Productivity, that I was just showing you. That's all about achieving your big goals, translating your goals into action. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate you being here. Have a great day and see you in the next one. Ciao.